This is take two. Uh, of course, you already know this because you probably saw the first one go up. And you'll notice that the voice quality in that one was terrible. So I've redone it. Here we are, 2288. I even deleted the save, as I always do. I'm going to take a note here and say, by the way, that Alpha Centauri is so much easier to do this with than Minecraft because the way you save, you can either overwrite a single save or you can just keep doing what we're doing and save, 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 save. Which, on the one hand, is kind of like cheating because you can always go back and reload an old save state. Of course, they have that autosave feature anyways. But on the other hand, if you need to redo something, you can. And I can't really redo anything I do in Minecraft unless I've got three or four backups, which I suppose I should do. Anyways, let's move on. I, I just don't have the backups. So, I like Alpha Centauri for that. It's really good. It makes this pretty nice. And yeah, I, I don't know. Hey! That's not us, but it's okay. As distances vanish, and the people can throw freely from... Pl I can't read. I'll just let you read that. Here, I'll provide a nice background. Do 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 There you go. Oh God! What have you done? Yeah, we're good. Ha ha! He had cruisers before I did. Anyways, that's why I'm not a, like, professional book reader for audio tape reading book companies. You know those book on tapes? I don't actually read any of those for people because it's all, like, I keep messing everything up, as you just saw there. I can sing, or I can pretend I can sing. I can pretend I can sing. That We'll, we'll say that. That's what we'll say. I can pretend I can sing better than anyone else. Snap. Aha! So, uh, one of the things I pointed out the first time I did this was that Miriam has finally been found. She's way up here. Revelation Base. Here we are. Um, her capital is New Jerusalem, so that's not her capital. But she's up here somewhere. Which is actually kind of convenient because we sent a bunch of our boats to go, like, here? Which means that they're not too far off from up there. Although they are a ways off, especially since they're tiny boats. Which reminds me, I need to make sure that I've... I think I took care of that already, but... I don't know. Did I? No, I didn't. You need to turn into one of those. Yeah, yeah. retool. And... Not the right one, I just want a regular you, not... Oh, silly. And we're going to come over here, transport foil, and obsolete. There we go. Okay, now let's continue with base management. Base management for the win. Looking at you. <sighs> There's no point for that. There was actually point to that. Sorry, there was not no point. There was po point and purpose. Oh, I was going to land and I did. Oh, silly. You are, I don't know, you're going that way. You're coming down here, we're going to see what's in here. Ready? Thought so. Just because you often get that. Wait. Can we hook it up? This is Apparently not. Moving on. Order. That transport is full. That transport is a bastard. This is why we need a better transport. Ugh, why did I start building these? I'm so I feel so dumb. Oh well. New base! Fort Liberty! That sounds awfully political. No, Alpha Centauri base names may or may not reflect any sort of real world views that I or any other commenters hold. Wait, no, that's not the way it goes. Alpha Centauri base names do not reflect any views held by any by the commentator or any friends, family, or etc. of the commentator. Alpha Centauri base names are sole property of the people who made them and have no basis on real life stuff. Nonetheless, it is in keeping with the faction. Transplasma Sentinels and all the other things like the recycling tanks and formers. 
and the Wreck Commons, and I don't know, a C Colony Prod, and a Network, no, no wait, Children's Crash, and then a Network. Yeah, we're not, a Perimeter def why not? Just throw it all in there. Just, here, throw it all. Just take it. Build everything. Build every, oh, and don't do that there. Yeah, it, it well, no. Wait, I have an idea. But it has to wait till next turn. Okay, until next turn, no dying. Turn complete. Huzzah! Production complete. Okay, so this turn should be the big turn of doom in which we spend all our time on something very important, and that something is base placement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to handle all this management really quick. Well, as quickly as you can handle base management in Alpha Centauri. Um, yeah. We're going to handle this base management, and then we're going to move on to that. La 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 la, build a road, don't go anywhere, you can't get over there, but you should, because that's where I want you to go, so I will move you right here. You still don't have space, so you're just going to wait. Uh, I guess you'll wait for another turn, and you're going to go... Urgh! I was not paying attention. Okay, that's fine. Let's take you and go this way. Oh, he went fast. Hide yourself in there. You are going to stay put. You are going to... I don't want to... I don't know if I want to stop producing you or not, man. Urgh. One of those. Growth won't be for a while. Let's keep with the probe teams. They're useful to have around. Oh, I don't know what I did there. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to do this. There we go. That's better. Uh, you don't have anywhere to go. You don't, and you don't, and you do! Let's not put you on land. Let's put you on land to explore. Ooh, that's good. And we're gonna we're gonna come back to you. So I held W. Cause we, I want, I want to wait. That guy's important. He'll take up the rest of the turn. And ah, perfect. You are going this way. There we go. Wonderful. That worked out excellently. All right, we've got a bunch of forests. Let's build a mine. And ha ha, we're back here. Okay, so this means that this is the last unit in the turn, which is good because this is the really important turn. I feel like I should have a second timer to limit how long I can talk on this, but it would be noisy. But maybe I should do it anyways. Nah. Okay. Here's the thing. This guy is going to be a staging ground for an attack on Lao. Now, don't get the wrong idea. I'm not going to start a war with Lao on purpose. Well, I probably not. There's a chance that I might. But I probably won't. It hurts your integrity rating, and it just, like, eh. I, I, that's not my goal in the game. But it's very possible that we will end up fighting Lao. And unlike the stupid Miriam who was hiding way up there and we couldn't find her for forever, if this, I mean, I'm a little, I'm not too worried about her. She's like, okay, she's got a bunch of infantry, no big deal, I'll just swipe her out with like airplanes or something. I don't know. I'll, she's not going to be a big challenge. Yang is a little bit more worrisome, but he forgot how to build boats properly, so that won't be a problem. I mean, Heck, all of his cities are coastal cities. I can take care of that easily. Well, also won't be a big problem, but I'm a little bit more concerned just because he's a little bit better. Actually, Yang has all those perimeter defenses. Maybe I should be concerned about that too. Hmm. Either way, everyone else in the world seems to have forgotten how to build boats or something. I don't know, but I'm the only one on a giant continent and they're all like on tiny islands. So the point here is, at some point in the future, we're gonna want we're probably, we're planning for the possibility of war happening with Lao. I'm sure we'll, we should plan for the war with other guys as well, so we should really be doing the same thing, sending colony pods out to everyone else. But part of the reason I'm doing this is because look at all of this stuff. Oh my goodness, there's so many ocean shelf squares around here. Like if I had some formers and I could just tweak things a little bit here and there and raise a couple more things, I could have like 
base and base and base and a, a base and a base and a base and a base. So many bases, and then take that base just because it's a base, and I could, I don't know, put a. There isn't really a, no, that's not really a good spot. That's just a spot for a supply convoy. But anyways, the point is, there's a lot of really good stuff right here, and he's not using it, and I want it. Mine. Also, also, if we do go to war with Lao, and we have a base here, look at that. All of our planes that we have, really good planes and stuff, and all those boats that we're going to be building, now they're going to have a home over here. So, strategy. Two things here. First of all, base placement. Second of all, actually no, first of all, how are you going... No, wait, yes, base placement, and then also troop maneuverability stuff. I'm going to start by moving the cursor off of that guy so he stops blinking and instead this guy starts blinking. Also this way I can click around a little bit more easily without messing anything up with that guy's like go-to buttons. So here's the thing. Let's assume we do are going to go to war with Lao. Now, resources alone say that I should put somebody on this side. However, if we were actually seriously going to go to war with Lao, this is not where I would ideally like to start based on the way he's set things up. Sure, it's obviously where I'm going to start based on the way my place is set up, but it's not the where I would necessarily really like to start. Here's the thing. I've got a couple options for base placement. I've got right up here, there's a, there's a great spot right here that gives me minerals and nutrients and all this kelp farm. I've got a spot here or actually here, this one, that gives me two nutrients, some kelp farm and energy. And there's a spot in here, I think it's this one, yeah, this square gives me two minerals and a nutrients. So three spots up top, three squares up top that possible locations for a base. Downside, if I were going to stage an assault, that would mean this guy is the first target. Now I could go here, but this guy's the closest, really. Going here is not a bad thing, but let's take a look at what happens once you do go here. You've got to contend with these guys, which is not a problem. I mean, the bunkers look like an issue, but they're not. You can run into them and boom, there you go. And it's not like you're not going to defend people in bunkers. You could, I guess, but it wouldn't be effective unless you had a line of bunkers, and he doesn't have a line of bunkers. Actually, if you went up and down like this, you'd have to have two lines of bunkers, which would be ridiculous. So if you came down here, and I take this, that means I have to take, assuming I'm going out for all-out conquest, suddenly I've got two bases down here, and a bunch of bases down here. Now you'll notice right away that Lao does not have a really good road network system thing. I mean, it's crazy. It's too many extra roads. And right here in particular, despite having too many extra roads, he only has like a con one connection there, one connection there, and one connection there. So UN headquarters is theoretically easily isolatable. Not that breaking one road means a whole lot. I mean, it does to infantry, but not to a rover. Mostly it's just slightly annoying. But the idea is that if I come in here, he can send in forces from these two bases and from these three bases to attack. Plus, if he had any air power, he could send it in from down there. More importantly, since I'm not too worried about defense, defending on multiple defending on multiple fronts is not a problem, since defense is not um, a vector quantity. It doesn't. It's not direction dependent. He can send in people there, there, and there, and it won't matter. What will matter, though, is I will have to split my forces to go that way and to go this way. And if he's sending forces and I'm sending forces, then I have to get through any forces in the field, which there probably won't be any because there very rarely are, um, and then I have to get to his forces here. And I have to do the same thing down here, which is not going to be good. If I send forces down here first, then I have to bring them back and send them down here. It's a bit of a mess. So ideally I would like to start like down here, but there's nothing down here. There's not many. I guess some of these look like no, they're all ocean. There, there's nothing down here. There's a mineral and eh, not worth it. But if I came down here, just look at this. I could go aid station, headquarters, uh, commerce committee, 
Temple of Soul, and I wouldn't have to split my forces until I came down here. And even then, I'd probably go either... I'd probably go High Commission, then Great Refuge, since the Ocean Authority is going to have to be dealt with separately in any case. I mean, my land campaign can't do anything to take Ocean Authority, which is good, I guess, for Lao, but not so good for me. So as it is, coming... Put in a base up here, while it's, there's some good resource prospects and some great peacetime prospects, not great choice for war. Additionally, it's a fair distance away. I can't fly that distance in one turn, and I'm not entirely sure I can fly... If I have a base over here, I don't think I can fly there in two turns, which is... I only get 22 squares. This base needs to be within 22 squares of this base. Or I have to build another one, like down here or over here, or heck, in the middle of the ocean, which would never work. That's a bit more complicated than I want. The whole idea of this actually being successful is for this one base to be important. Yeah, it's great if I have a second base, but this guy has to be in the right spot. If he's not in the right spot, this is not going to work, because we might end up going to war with Lao sooner than I want, and if I don't have that second base there, it, it, yeah. Not going anywhere. So, top spots are out. What's that leave us with? Well, we've got this kelp area, which is actually pretty nice. There is some, uh, right here, there's some ocean squares. Keypad again, or numpad, I should say. There's some ocean squares. Uh, kind of like a, a revert, like a bay of sorts. I was going to say reverse bay, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, like a bay of sorts. And we can fix that, make them ocean shelf with formers, but I don't have any right now. So, as far as an immediate base placement, again, this is not a great spot. Even if there were a spot that could get me this stuff, and the nutrients, and the minerals up here, which, of course, there isn't. So we come down, we look at another spot, we've got... We're, so we're coming farther and farther away from down here, which means if we do start a war thing, whatever, we're probably actually going to take Ocean Authority first, which is fine, because that'll give him time to bulk up, which is not so fine, but it'll mostly give him time to like consider whether he really wants to do this. It'll give us a little bit of time to get things going, and we can mount a separate offensive here than here. Once we have Ocean Authority, we can easily come in through High Commission, hit up Great Refuge, Temple of Soul. I think that's the way I'll do it, because again, if I go here, then I have to split and there's no road that goes from Great Refuge to Aid Station or Headquarters. So I think I'll go High Commission, Great Refuge, Seoul, Commerce Committee, and then the Headquarters. At that point, I'll have the majority of his um, bases, a fair share of the land, not that the land matters, but I'll have the majority of the bases, production, and everything else. Now, I want to make sure that I'm close to the base so that if I send somebody over here, like let's say I have bombing runs, I can easily come over and bomb a mine, I can bomb a solar array, or if I'm feeling really douchey, I can, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that, if I'm feeling like a big jerk, then I can come all over here and um, bomb a farm, which is not a good thing to do. Don't bomb farms, kids, and I'm sorry, I, I just pretend I didn't say anything there. So, this would be a great spot for bombing. This would be an excellent spot for bombing because I'm really close and I'm within 11 squares, which is, I have to be within 11 squares in order to bomb a city. So I've got it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, if I counted right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which obviously includes that and that and that radius. Do I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? I can even get you in a headquarters. So a base here would be really cool because I can get everybody within the bombing radius. It's a little far, but I think it is within reach for a two-turn flight. Not the favorite of flights, but it's within reach. Next, though, there's the resource issue, and I don't know. Let's look at some other prospects. We've got a prospect here. I don't know about this one as much. It's going to be weird clashing with this base so close, but it's not a bad spot. 
And then there is a spot right here, which is a really cool spot. There's also a spot down here, but I don't, I'm don't. i not going to consider that. It's a far away, and this one's closer to that. This one's, this one's closer to the rest of the base. This one's too far away from the base and doesn't get enough resources. So this guy is the next biggest spot. Two minerals, two energies, fair amount of kelp, only one ocean square, and I can terraform that up easily. It's a not too close to Ocean Authority. I could if I wanted to put a base over here in the future. The only downside is that <clears throat> right here, I don't have very many bases in bombing radius. In fact, my air power units can only go 11, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11. That's just Great Refuges just outside bombing range. Maybe that's okay, though. I'm, once I get a base over here, I can move all my guys in. So as useful as a base right here is because I can bomb everybody. I don't necessarily need to because the idea is that I have a good force here to stage an assault that I can and I can just keep moving the staging grounds up. A little leapfrog effect. The important thing is to have a strong start. And I think this square is going to provide the strongest start. This square just doesn't have the resources. This square has two minerals, it's got energy, and it's got plenty of uh, kelp farms. No, re no nutrients. But, as we've seen from my other so uh, thing here, look at that, I get three things there. Yeah, five! Okay, big. But I get three. And look at how little you get minerals, how few minerals you get. Very few minerals in an ocean base. Those minerals are going to be really important, so I want a base that can build. Granted, putting a base here is also a really good choice. It puts me a much better bomb radius. I'm not too much farther away from my base than I am here. A uh, few squares, but not too much. You can even argue that this is a straighter line, so... The thing I don't like about this is that this guy may not be the best spot to mesh, and I would have to split up this amazing resource right here. There's also some ocean squares right here that I... well, I guess I'd only get that one. So it's not that big a deal, and it's only one ocean square, which is the same thing there. But I have to terraform a lot of my own stuff in here, and here there's a lot of kelp farm already existing, so yeah. Again, this issue of having a strong strike platform, that gives me three spots. This one, this one, and this one. This one's out because of resources, and that just gives me these two. I'm going with this one. I know I promised this wouldn't take up all video, and here it has, but I'm going with this one. It doesn't give me the same strike zone, but it gives me awesome resources. Sorry, gives me awesome resources, and it's close enough to my regular bases that I'm going to be fine getting down there. I do feel a little iffy because I'm not taking the one that looks really nice right there, um, at least from the military. You know, it's I. You like having oh lots of bomb. I can bomb everyone, but that's not necessary. And that's got better resources. I don't know why I keep saying that. Anyways, that's our video for today. That strategy. Focusing on a way to come in if we have to, getting somebody down here. He's a little far, but he's close enough that I can strike Ocean Authority and High Commission, which is where I'm going to start. Once I have those guys, I can continue bombing. I can move my front up and bomb up here. Um, this guy should just be able to reach Temple of Soul. Now the downside, of course, is that I don't get to continue the bombing from back here, and so if he pushes back, that could be an issue, but I don't expect that big a resistance. You've seen my graph. I'm unsurpassed. Besides, I'm noble. I'm not really looking to start a fight. If this were a human player, this probably would start a fight. Computer player, I don't know. I don't think he'll start a fight over this. Not on this difficulty. We'll see. At any rate, that is today's video. Um, base management and strategy. We're still doing research, neural grafting, which will give us the bioenhancement center, plus two morale on everything, and also the neural amplifier as a nice secret project. And it helps us get a little bit closer to copters, which are 
a little bit more versatile than planes. The cyborg factor, which is really nice, gives you a bio henchman fist center everywhere, and most importantly, the drop pods, which are really cool too, although not necessarily right now. Point being that it's going to be nice, but it's a long way off. So that's that. Um, I hope this video turned out much better than the last one. I know I spent a lot of time on the strategy again. Oh well, that's the the name of the video is strategy. So thanks for watching, and until next time, don't catch on fire.